I'm joined now by Yan Song. She is the director of the program on Chinese cities at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. Her current research focuses on low carbon and green city development. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. So it's taken about three decades to turn around the Kubuchi Desert. How much would a restoration project like that cost? And what are the first steps in getting something like that started? Right. The, according to a private enterprise named um, Allion Resources Group, it has Yeah, private enterprises need to make profitable investments. And the third, which is the key, the uh, local community, including the local farmers and herdsmen, would really benefit from the process and participate in the greening industries. And um, uh, lastly, the uh, research institutes should really support the whole process by uh, providing innovative and top-notch green technologies along the way. You know, we saw a lot of the green space that now occupies the desert there, but uh, what we didn't see is that it also has China's largest single-stage solar farm uh, in the Kubuchi Desert. So how does that project fit into China's overall environmental goals? The Kubuchi's largest single-stage solar firm produces about the half the power generating capacity of the Hoover Dam in the U.S. So you, you get the picture of the, its uh, capacity. At the same time, China is the largest uh, renewable energy investor in the world and uh, employs uh, over 40 percent of the sector's global workforce. And five of the uh, six largest um, uh, sort of the uh, solar farm or solar manufacturing firms are from China. Uh, so you can see the Kubuchi's transformation efforts definitely illustrates China's goals and uh, credentials as the uh, world leader in the uh, green uh, business. That being said, we know that uh, parts of Africa are also working on similar projects. What do you think other nations can learn from this particular project that China did with the Kubuchi Desert? I'm sure. Um, as you can see, it's, it's a, really, a, a really amazing achievement in China. So uh, the lessons and experiences in China should definitely be uh, transferred to the other countries in the world. Um, teams from uh, Saudi Arabia, as you mentioned, uh, Africa and uh, um, Pakistan have already studied the Kubuchi experiences. And there's a great opportunity that uh, China can export green technologies to the countries along the uh, Silk Road. Um, or the uh, new Belt and Road Initiative. However, I want to emphasize that uh, the, um, the essence of success of the Kubuchi experience needs to look at the uh, local conditions, need to make local adjustments to adjust to the climate conditions, to the hydrological conditions, and the unique um, policy conditions in the different countries. It has to be tailored. All right, uh, Yan Song in mm -hmm. Chapel Hill, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Elaine.